If you've ever wondered how to create explosive effects and super cool hacks in your Scratch project, then you are at the right place. In this video, I'll go over 5 Scratch tips and tricks that will instantly level up your games. At number 5, we have jumping and gravity. This is a must know for a wide array of games, whether you're trying to build a platformer or even something way harder than that. Right here, I have a basic movement script that moves the cat along the X direction. Here's what you need to do to add a jumping and a gravity mechanism. To begin with, we'll need two different variables. The first can be called Y well to keep track of the velocity of the cat in the Y direction. The second is has jumped. I'll add a question mark at the end to indicate that it's a Boolean variable that will only store a true or false value. At the beginning, set both these variables to zero. The sprite isn't moving along the Y axis and plus, Zero represents false, in the sense that the cat has not jumped at this point. We'll use the has jumped variable in such a way that it will be set to 1 while the cat is in the air and 0 while the cat is on the ground. Great. Now at the side, grab a when up arrow key is pressed block. This is when we must give the signal for the cat to jump. But first, we must check if the cat is already in the air. The has jump variable comes very handy here. If this is false, then we can make it true and also bump up the Y velocity. That's it for this script, but of course we must get the cat to follow the Y velocity along the vertical axis in the main script. This is quite simple, just change Y by the Y velocity. Adding gravity here is very easy. Gravity would just lower the sprite's Y velocity while it is in the air. So here, just check if the has jumped variable is 1 and if it is, then change the Y velocity by negative 2. The last part is to just stop all of this when the sprite has hit the ground. We wouldn't want this to continue otherwise. Here, I'll just keep the ground as negative 120. If the Y position is below this, then we set the Y velocity to 0. After all, the sprite should no longer fall down. Also, the sprite may be a little bit off below, so we need to bring it up to the ground once again. This won't be noticeable for the player, but it's very important to have this in. Lastly, we must allow the player to jump once again, so set the has jumped variable back to no. And that's really it. If you test the program, then you should have jumping. It's the building block of a huge number of games, so make sure you use this trick to the fullest. At number 4, we have double jumping. This is how you can take your jumping script to the next level. This is frequently used in so many games and it's really a super cool feature. I'll start from where we left off with the normal jumping script. In the same fashion as the has jumped variable, we will need a new one called has double jumped. This will work in the same manner. Initially, set it to be 0. We can now move over to the event detection. Basically, we must allow a double jump only when the player has already jumped and is in the air. When would this be the case? Well, it would be just when this particular condition is false. However, we need to be careful again. We can't double jump once we've already double jumped. So we need to make sure that the player has not already double jumped. The rest of the code within this event can remain the same. To finish things off, we just reset the has double jumped variable the same way that we did for the has jumped variable. And this is it. If you test the code out, then you will have double jumping. Now, you can use this feature in every single one of your games. At number 3, we have Custom Key Detection. Here's a project with just a normal key press script. You can notice that when the space key is held, the cat will say that the key has been pressed, while otherwise it says that no key has been pressed. We can just hack this key press block by getting a join and placing it inside. After this, just type the name of the key that you wish to detect. I'll go ahead with the enter key. And well, that's really all you have to do. You can see that now the program detects the enter key rather than the space key. That's really cool and we can even detect special characters. For example, you may want to create a shortcut in your game that shift plus one when pressed together will create some type of a menu bar. Well, shift plus one gives the exclamation mark character. So you could just add that here and it will work the way that you expect. Now, I will say that while this trick is super versatile, it does have some limitations. That is, you cannot directly detect some keys such as Control, Shift, Alt, Backspace, and Tab. 
but it is still a very very useful thing to know at number 2 we have oscillations in a lot of cases we have something like a title screen with some buttons and animations one could leave them static but having them move around like this looks way cooler i'll cover two different oscillations the first one is with rotation and the second one is with translation so let's get started i'll take the first case where we might want a button to oscillate up and down about this position of y negative 35 this is actually quite simple we we'll need a variable as a counter and i'll call it c at the start of the script you can set c to 0 and at the end of the main loop change it by 2 for the y position first mention the center about which you would like the oscillation in our case that's negative 35 after this multiply the second operand by a value i'll take this to be 25 this is what's called the amplitude of oscillation effectively This means that we will move up and down the center y position by 25 pixels. After this, multiply the amplitude by the sine of the variable c. You can keep this entire block as it is, but I personally prefer rounding the value. Test it out and it should give you the animation that you desire. If you would like the movement to be faster than what it currently is, then you can just bump up the increment and this will speed up the whole animation. Lastly, you can have an offset from the center as the starting point by adding a constant value within the sign. This is what's known as a phase angle. An angle of 90 means that the button will oscillate about the same center position, but it will start at one of the corners. If you test it out, you should get what I mean. Now, you can play around with these values to get the effect that you desire. So, that was for a translation. Now, I'll explain how you can add a rotation. It's very similar to the translation except that we will use a point and direction block instead. The only difference is that it's usually better to keep the values a lot smaller. I personally prefer a 5 degree rotation on each side. Since the default direction is 90, that is what I will oscillate around, although you can customize this as well. For the rotation, I would recommend getting rid of the round block because this tends to make it quite choppy. I'll also bump the increment to 3. and that's really it if you test the program you will get a super smooth rotatory oscillation super easy silky smooth and super effective finally at number 1 we have particle effects and explosions these are incredibly common and you should see why they really make games look so much better in this video i'll go over how to create two of these types of explosions and you can decide which one to use depending on your game itself In this project I have two sprites the player itself and a circular sprite called explosion which is roughly the size of my player let's say that you want the player to explode when the space key is pressed we'll coordinate this with three different message blocks the first can be called death the second message can be called death tick and this will be the one responsible for the animation so put this within a repeat 10 the last message can be called death end and this will basically make the whole animation conclude great now move on to the explosion sprite at the start when the green flag is clicked we will set the ghost effect to 40% then resize it and then hide now is the main code on receiving the death message we just move to the player's position and then show great when we receive the death tick message we will make the sprite expand and fade at the same time So change size by 20 and change the ghost effect by about 7. At this point the effect will have ended so on receiving the death end message just hide. And well that's all there is for this effect. You can see that it gives a pretty clean look that's way better than nothing. You can even add sound effects to make this cooler. Let me show you. Yeah that sounded really good. All right Now I'll go over the second way of creating an explosion. This is more suitable when the player controls themselves through something like a shape. As you can see here, I have some code that is fairly similar but with some differences. For the player itself, I have a death animation as well as the death fade. The second animation will be involved in creating a smooth fade out effect. Given that I just explained the previous way of exploding a sprite, this should make sense. Now I'll go through the explosion sprite. 
You can see in the costumes that I have four different colors from the same clear sprite. If you wish, you can add more, but this will suffice for my example. Also notice that I've named the costumes as numbers. This will make switching between them very easy. Okay, let's now get back to the code tab. As of this moment, the sprite will just hide when the green flag is clicked. So we'll have to actually create the clones. For this effect, you'll need to randomize three different attributes of each clone. The first is the costume, which we will switch randomly. The second is the direction. This can be from negative 180 to positive 180, which basically means that these particles will fly around in all directions around the player. Lastly, the size can be a random value from 25 to 75. Each of these parameters need to be applied for a clone, so enclose this within a repeat 10 and at the end of each iteration, create a clone. Awesome, this will set everything up and now we can code the animation. On receiving the death message, we just move the clones to the player's position and then show. On the other hand, during each tick of the death animation, the clones can just move in their previously assigned direction. Adding an if on edge bounce will make the aesthetics a lot better. Lastly, for the death fade message, we will apply the same logic as the death animation, except that we will also slowly fade the particles out. We can be sure that the particles will all be invisible, so you can leave it at that with no height necessary. And well, if you test out the program, you should get this marvelous effect. I mean, just take a look at this, it's so cool. And there you have it, 5 awesome ways to improve your Scratch games. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out, and until next time, peace out.